Mo Udall is my guest this evening. Mo, people have said of you that you talk one way here and you vote another back in Washington. Are they right? I've heard this for 20 years, and my answer is always the same. Why, when, where? You know, I, I vote on 900 issues every year. You go to the floor, you vote on space and agriculture and economic questions and balanced budget and the military. 900 votes last year. I, send, I go out and send uh, these to all the editors. We send out hundreds of these voting records. They weigh about a pound. And uh, some of my opponents come along and say, my God, we have just discovered Udall has this horrible voting record. I have distributed this year after year and time after time to all of the people. And I've always challenged my opponents to give me one example, one for instance or two. Where and when in Arizona did I say something and then go back in Washington and, and vote the other way? And they never come up with anything. And it's uh, one of the things you just have to live with, I guess. But I've been proud of standing for things. If you're going to Congress or city council, for God's sakes, take some positions and not just try to get yourself reelected. My voting record is an open book. Sometimes I've made a mistake, not many. But when you're voting 900 times in the course of a year, later events may show you that you're wrong on one or two of these things. And if so, admit it and try and straighten it out. But I really resent this idea that somebody has dug in and finally discovered, my God, Udall was uh, uh, for abortion under the right circumstances for poor women or some of the other things we've talked about. It's all on the public record. It's spread out year after year and time after time. If my opponent can show me where I, I said one thing and voted another way, I'd be glad to uh, admit my mistake. But I don't think he's going to find anything like that. But I think it, it perhaps goes a little deeper than that. People say that when you're home, you talk a middle of the roady, little bit conservative. And yet, when you look at the national picture, you were the liberal candidate for president in 76, and you supported Teddy Kennedy yep. of the liberal wing of the Democratic Party this time around. You know, I'm a Democrat, and I'm in the mainstream of the Democratic Party. At the University of Arizona, I was for Harry Truman when he ran. I was with Adlai Stevenson, who got, gave me my first exposure in national politics. I'm a mainstream Democrat. Take, Mike Man the, take the Rocky Mountains, Clint Anderson in New Mexico, Mike Mansfield in Montana, uh, the senators in Utah and Wyoming, and Frank Church in Idaho, and Scoop Jackson in Washington. I am a Democrat. I'm a middle-of-the-road, mainstream Democrat, and I always have been. And if that's liberal, you know, make the most of it. I, I wrote myself a memorandum in 1976 when I started to run and uh, said the one thing you don't do is get off in this McGovern liberal corner and get tagged with that. And I was trying to get rid of Birch Bayh and Senator uh, Benson and the guy from the governor of Pennsylvania and all these other candidates so I could take on Jimmy Carter one-on-one -on -one because I was in the middle of the road and he was to the right part of the mainstream of the Democratic Party. We never got there. I could never get rid of these other challengers and take Jimmy one-on-one. -on -one. And if I could, I, uh, I would beat him. But I'm a mainstream Democrat. I, I, Eisen, I'm not Eisenhower. Kennedy, Johnson, Adlai Stevenson, and all of the others. And I'm proud of it. I think Dem the Democratic Party has been good for this country. I'm in the mainstream of that party. And uh, I'm happy there. You mentioned Harry Truman, and that makes me think of St. Louis this summer. I, I was in St. Louis when you were the keynote speaker at the Democratic Convention. And, uh, of course, you know, you do the when you're from Tucson kind of routine. Sure. I was driving downtown, and one of the talk radio shows, a woman came on the next morning, and she said, you know, I didn't know who that Mo Udall was, but she said, I really like what he said, because he said he was for ERA, Equal yeah. Rights for All Americans. Right. And I thought, I've got to remember to tell Mo he's got a big fan in St. Louis. Oh, that's good. I'm proud of that. What would you do about um, power in this country? You're talking about electrical yes. power or Yes, electrical power? or coal. The question is what we do about nuclear power first. We got into nuclear in the 1950s in all good conscience. Our presidents, our scientists said it was clean, it was safe, that's the way to go. I now have real doubts. We've got 72 plants operating. I'm not ready to close them down. I think we've got to keep them to get us through the 80s and in, into the 90s. We've got 96 plants under construction, three at Palo Verde. Uh, my position is let's go ahead and finish them up. Uh, I, don't, I don't like it and I'm worried. Let's, let's make them safe in accordance with what we learned at Three Mile. 
But then let's have a halt, and let's not go any more nuclear until we're a little bit more satisfied with its safety. And let's use this time to get going on solar and hydrogen and wind and garbage and all these alternative sources, including a big dose of conservation. And maybe in 30 years we can look back and say we didn't have to go any further into this nuclear swamp. But my committee deals with this. Uh, I'm trying to write a nuclear policy bill for the country. And I hope that it's a slow down, a reassess whether nuclear was really the way to go, and uh, if we possibly can, get going on non-nuclear renewable kinds of resources. One of the things that your opponent, Mr. Huff, mentioned is that uh, Tucson Electric Power is fueled by coal and he feels that your legislation or your committee work has been definitely against coal. No, 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 we got a double production of coal. Tucson Electric will tell you that I've been the guy that got them the railroad right away to the Navajo coal field so they can get a new station going in northern Arizona. Uh, we've got to have a little bit, we've got to have more coal, we've got to have more wind, we've got to have all kinds of, uh, of resources, and coal is the way to go for a lot of this interim kind of power. But you know, there, there are no easy answers anymore. If you burn coal, you have decided uh, that you're gonna kill some coal miners. It's a dangerous occupation. If you burn coal, you've decided that you're gonna run the danger of acid rain, which showers down upon communities downwind from where these plants are. No easy answer anymore. We had, uh, we had easy answers and cheap uh, energy in the 50s and 60s. We're not gonna have it anymore. And we've gotta, there's some trade-offs, some risk you run, whatever you do in energy. We'll be back in one moment. Well, you were saying that you've been in Congress 19 years now, representing this southern Arizona area. The Titans have been ringing Tucson for just about 20 years right. now. You and I remember back when they had the big argument about uh, putting them here. Yeah, I remember when my husband went to cover uh, one of them going up and the darn thing blew up and they had to get the newsmen out of there in a hurry. Before I remember. Barry Goldwater said he remembered too. What are your thoughts now on the Titan II's and should we leave them in place? I've tried to visit these Titan II sites, Ellen, every year or so since I've been in Congress. These are some of the most dedicated good people down in those silos, down in the control command thing, day after day, month after month. And I wanted them to know that I appreciate the work they're doing. This is a liquid-fueled missile in which you combine two liquids and the tremendous force is the, kind, is the rocket that sent our people off to the moon. And sooner or later you phase them out. The idea was that the MX missile was coming along and uh, we'd phase them out when we got the MX in position. Incidentally, my opponent, Richard Huff, one of the few th times they let him loose to state his opinion, wanted the MX missile brought to Arizona, southern Arizona, so we'd not only have the Titans, we'd have the MX. But I think uh, it's basically a safe missile. The people are dedicated. We ought to get SALT II ratified. We ought to get the MX missile on the line and then phase these things out. But I don't want to see uh, southern Arizona have both the Titans and the MX missile as Mr. Huff has proposed. What is your vision of Tucson? What is your vision of Southern Arizona as the uh, century will overtake us? You know, this is a special place to live. I came here when the population was 50,000 as a freshman at the University of Arizona. There are going to be a million people in this valley at the end of the century, just 20 years from now. And we're going to be judged by our children and grandchildren about whether we were smart enough and wise enough to make this and keep this place a special kind of place with the mountains on all four sides, with decent parks, with a transportation system that lets us move more people around. And my hope is that I can look back and say I played a part in keeping Tucson or making Tucson the kind of place we want it to be and the kind of place we'd like our children and grandchildren to have. Is, uh, what are the things that you feel are undone by you in Congress? What, do you, what is left to be done? Well, I look around in Tucson, uh, the national park on both sides of the town. No many places have a national park on both sides of the city. My brother and I got President Kennedy to, to do Saguaro West out here in the Tucson mountains. I look up on Push Ridge where the bighorn sheep are and where it's in wilderness. My bill put it in there and uh, our children are going to be able to look at that. And it's this kind of thing that... Uh, that makes you proud. The, uh, the people who put up Golden Gate Park in San Francisco or Central Park in New York, 
are people of vision, and I'd like to be lo looked upon as somebody who did a little bit, who had some vision and foresight and made Tucson the kind of special community that we want it to be. Thank you for being with us this evening, Mo. Helen, thank you. Good program. Keep it up. Thank you. Please join me next week when we'll take a little break from the political issues and we'll have Linda Adams who will talk about effectiveness training, how to say no, how to get a raise from your boss, and then we'll come back with the following two weeks with Mr. Schulz and Mr. Goldwater. And the Sunday before the election, we will have an hour special on the proposition. So tune in for those shows. <laughs>